Hey guys, welcome back to Off The Record where we talk about whatever we want. And today we have Anthony here. Ooh. Welcome back. Good to be here. Yeah. Yoink, yoink. Do you have matching tattoos on both fingers? Oh no, no, it's just one. No, just one. What does that say? Just one? It's Kin. K-I-N. Well, it looks like an Asian character, meant to be designed like that, but sideways K-I-N. How does your mom feel about your Asian uh, exploitation of the Kinja's world? Please elaborate. How does she feel about your career choice? <laughs> <laughs> it's good now, as long as I pay the bills, it don't matter what I do. Oh, they didn't care? I mean, they didn't like it before? Uh, my mom... What did they were like, you gotta be a doctor. My, my mom had a difficult time, uh, maybe understanding and seeing, um, what was not traditional, right? Especially for their generation, you know, being like first generation Asian immigrant parents. Did they live in a village? Uh, they they pretty much lived in villages out, out in Vietnam. So when they came over, you know, met in Hawaii uh, and, and got married and then had my they sister. Mm -hmm. In the US? Yeah, in the US. And then um, came over, had me, you know, uh, pretty much the, my whole childhood, they were running like a dry cleaners. You know, and when you run a dry cleaners, that's like, one, stereotypically Asian, and then two, uh, it's it's a it's just honest work, right? You just work really, it's work. You just clean people's clothes. Labor yeah. all day, every day. So your understanding of like uh, your own life and what you're working hard for to give your children that opportunity, the classic story of just like, you know, I'm gonna work my ass off and do this stuff that I'm cleaning other people's clothes my whole life mm -hmm. in order to let you have an opportunity to like go to college. So Buy you new clothes. So I go to college. Spend all this money, right, on, on, on a degree, I got a bachelor's degree. In but you don't use studies. it. Well, technically, I make you know YouTube videos. But you don't use it. Trust yeah. me. Mm. Um, and then after you go get a degree, you're like, "Fuck this degree! I'm gonna go dance." That's why you backstab me, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she said it exactly like that. Right? <laughs> so, so I get it. Me. Logically speaking, you flip flopping bitch. Why don't you stick with what you fucking chose, man? <laughs> When you chose that major, what did you even get pushed back? Yeah, what did you, what did you major in? I majored in film. What? That's not traditional. No, but it was fun. Were they cool with that? That's like, bullshit. Cause that's already like- I think so because I think you're already in college. You know what I'm saying? If it's like offered in a, a, a oh. reputable place, then yeah. you, you must accept it more. You know what I'm saying? I see. But to like go back out and not have a regular workforce schedule, to not have to clock into stuff, to not receive a paycheck ever, from other people. Yeah, you ever tell your mom that there's like social media studies now in uh, college? And that what oh, you do is actually a, an actual like thing to study now. I mean, it, it's, it's funny to like, uh, apply for a bunch of schools and get rejected, right? When, mm -hmm. when you're like in high school. And then like, you, you guys know as social media influencers, we've like gone to those same Ivy Leagues now and like done presentations. I teach there, fuck face. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know, so like just that conversation has a been able to like shift people's perspective. It, that is funny. You got, you're going to speak and teach the students that you got rejected. Hella rejected. And some of them are Ivy Leagues too. I, I didn't even apply here because I knew I didn't have a chance. <laughs> Would have been a waste of money. Oh, so funny. What about you guys? You guys is... I want to hear your story, dude. What the hell? What Fuck happened? my story, man. Do your parent, did your dad ever go, oh, my son, he's... A he's stupid a, He's bitch. a fairy, man. He just move around and shit. <laughs> he hear music and he just fucking just wiggle around and shit. I don't think so. My dad my dad had a little bit more openness and logic, oh, you know, to back up his understanding, you know? That's dope. What about your sister? What did she do? She was, she is a, uh, pretty much like a manager, I think, of financial, like, brokers and stuff. Oh. oh. So, Type. Very, uh, you know. Owns a home, got married, has two children. Very, very great example, role model. So yes. that that's easy for parents to digest. Oh yeah, for example, I definitely look like a like rebel. Cast. <laughs> like what about in your whole in your whole family too? Like out of your cousins? Black sheep for sure. Oh shit. Didn't learn piano. Don't speak Man. Chinese. You know. Mm -hmm. Didn't make it into the good schools. Uh, don't get like a traditional kind of work environment. All that. Wow. But love it. We are mm -hmm. an entrepreneur. Hey yo! Have they seen like all the all your studios and like? They have now. And did I mean, they go back? That, that shit's that's, tight. Yeah, that's been a. Um, I feel like that's the most tangible thing for like an Asian parent, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like oh, yo, I started this conceptual cr company, this group like Kinja's LLC. It's like a performance group. It's like okay, cool. It's like here's a dojo. Oh, you have a place. You know what I mean? It's like I understand. It's like you have a you build a million dollar app. And they're like, when are you gonna get a real job? <laughs> and then you're like working at the post office and they're like, 
That's right. <laughs> that's my that's my son right there. <laughs> my dad just doesn't get anything unless it's in the newspaper, like a like an actual pa physical newspaper. So I was telling him about you know, YouTube and Maker Studios for years, and he was just like, I don't know, like you didn't go to school, like you didn't get a regular job, whatever. And um, and it's not acting, it's not like, tr you know, traditional media. Um, but then, like five years later, he's like, like VidCon's going on, and he read about Maker getting sold to Disney for, you know, half a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. And he was like, have you heard of Maker Studios? I'm like, Dad, that I've been, Yes, like uh, I've been telling you about this for like five years. He's like, well, they just got bought by Disney, and mm -hmm. there's a video convention going on right now, and He's there's an. Have you heard of Angry Cat and <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Grumpy Cat? <laughs> He's like, I don't know. There's a famous so cat. It's gonna be there. The annoying oh. carrot. Because he read about it in a newspaper. Oh wow! Yeah, I wonder classic. what's gonna be our version of that to our kids. Right, Twitter. <laughs> if it didn't happen on Twitter, it didn't happen on Twitter on the Twitter. <laughs> yeah, we won't even know the new. Actually, no, it's TikTok. That's I, I should know. Right. I'm literally in the example. Like we're both the example because Isaac will come up to me and he'll be like, "Oh, mom, let me do," and like he's trying to do this one thing, and I'm like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "Oh, I learned this from TikTok," and I'm like, "What?" <laughs> Does he make TikTok content now too? No, he. Um, I'm terrible at TikTok. He doesn't. Uh, he just consumes it. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. He consumes things. What's cool about my dad now is uh, he, so he watches our vlogs and that's how he stays caught up to our life, which is pretty cool because in quarantine he doesn't really come over that much. <laughs> and so now I think because he's watched it so much and he watches all the videos, YouTube is a thing to him now. Like he knows it's an actual he's thing. He's finally caught up. Yeah, he's finally caught up. So like the other day for Father's Day when he came over to hang out with Taika, um, he saw me grab the camera and he goes, oh, Movie time? You gonna make a movie? <laughs> he's like, like <laughs> yeah. So he's like, because no, like, now he knows. Oh, that's my job and that's my work. So he's like, <laughs> now he's respectful. Yeah, stay out of my son's way. He's about to make a movie right now. <laughs> that's tight. So that's funny. Tight. You know, back in the day when we were uh, doing the skits, like we would want him to be quiet. <laughs> and, like hey, we're about to roll, and like we have the fucking mic, we have lights set up, not not just the small camera, yeah. but like like bigger setup, An actual what? camera. And he would give two fucks about it. No, he was yeah. like, hey, what? You want me to? He's be like, quiet? I'm not talking, All and right. he starts cooking. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'm just like, uh, no, okay, all right. We're working with the dad. Yeah. That's funny. I know, wasn't he making some soup once or something? We were at your he was one time watching TV, he's like, I won't say anything. And he, and you start hearing TV. Yeah. <laughs> so my dad, we can't have any noise. And he's like, all right, cool. I wasn't talking. And it's like the loud ass soap opera. I'm like, dad, we can't, you can't be watching TV either. And he goes, oh. And he goes in the kitchen. Oh my God. <laughs> in that conversation of like, uh, I guess, general, generally speaking, like Asian parents that kind of have that, you know, traditional understanding. Do we feel like there's a more like this ethnic Asian group has a more traditional parent perspective yep. versus like, like what, what would the ranking be? I think um, it's not so much culture, but OK, when you think about Asian immigrants, right? Um, I was I was questioning this for a long time because I'm like, why was my family different from Bart's? Or I love it when Joe goes in this mode, by the way. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Mode. You could see from his he's body. Yeah. His shoulders are put back, his chest a little bit popped His up. feet are on the ground very, instead of on yeah, the table. Very, <laughs> very centered. No axe in his hand. <laughs> this is when Joe doesn't like the topic. <laughs> <laughs> he starts like putting his hair in ponytail. Yeah. I was gonna do that right now too, but I forgot my, 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 my band. <laughs> but anyways, okay. Think about the population that's here and when you hear the that the most. It's from war refugees. It's from people that didn't want to leave Asia, but they have to be here because they were they needed a second chance. So they're all in survival mode. So when you're in survival mode, right? Everything else is like, why are you gonna do art? Why are you gonna do all, you're like, this is fucking stupid. Make money. So their mentality is, if you spoke to a like, upper class Asian family that's old money, they've been generationally rich, I highly doubt that they disrespect the arts like the poor population does. Cause they know that there's famous painters, They're, they know there's classical musicians, they know all that, or like, the they have investing a, in the arts. Exactly, yeah. and they understand business, they're like, so if, you're, if your kid is gonna become an entrepreneur, they're gonna build this or whatever, they're way more educated. But what you're talking to when you say quote unquote Asian parents, you're talking to poor, 
uh, people who came here uneducated and they don't understand the world as much because their scope is like you said from your parents, they only know the, uh, the, the dry cleaner. They, that's all they know. But if you spoke to an Asian family that maybe uh, took time in college and they, they, de they develop skills in, in the arts and then they, they like that and they, they're a patron of the arts, that's a whole different story. So I think that's why I'm like, oh shit, so is it an Asian thing or is it a class thing? Mm -hmm. But it's like the majority, I guess, of, of, mo of most of the Asians that come here, they have, when they share stories, it's a very similar story because I think most people do come here looking for a better life or looking for a second chance. Mm -hmm. yeah, but there's also like a lot of like rich Asians that also, I think, uh, are forced to become doctors or lawyers or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah like you gotta keep it on track with the white collar jobs or whatever. So I, there's say, that problem too. What do you think about like Indians, like Indian culture? Um, Cause a lot of them aren't like super poor, but they still are very, the same kind of, the same kind of route of like be a doctor. I think I, that's why I said yeah. generational money and a patron of the arts and the family don't have this concept of you have to be like, that's not real wealth. Real wealth is oh, your I trust see. fund you don't have to ever worry about money again. But they do care about prestige, so they might not be okay with you being a DJ, but maybe if you become like a musician in the or, or another way, but an a, example is this. A lot of uh, wealthy like Taiwanese ABCs, right? If they're like not doing so hot in the States or whatever, but their kids wanna be a, a artist or a musician or a pop star, this is a common thing that I heard from my Taiwanese friends is that they just go to Taiwan and they become someone famous or whatever. So uh, I'm like, mm, is it an Asian thing or is it more a uh, class thing? And new money to me is still not the upper echelon. So you're talking new about money. the 1%. There's a 1% there that doesn't care about needing to be a doctor or a lawyer or just making means yeah. like from a traditional aspect. They have, well, the pa they have passive income rather than yeah. like you're working 80 hours as a doctor yeah. to get six figures. With even the Taiwanese example, uh, so I knew a bunch of those kids too, and uh, I have friends in Taiwan that are also like on the pop star level. A lot of them, when they come here, they're still trying to go into med school, and if they can't make it to med school, yeah. they go back. So one of the most famous Weird. ones, his name's Lee Hom Wang. All of his parents, all of his brothers and sisters, are all doctors still. So even though they're, they're old money over there, I think just certain professions hold such a high level of prestige mm -hmm. yeah. that when they come here, they wanna be the American version of that. Mm -hmm. Cause they know how dope, I guess, being a doctor is over there. So imagine being an American doctor and they come here and that, that's still what they pursue. And then they're like, oh, you can't do that? Then I guess I'll be the Jason Derulo of Taiwan. You know? Maybe it is different kinds of Asians then because here's the thing, like, I don't know if other Asian countries, because I can only speak about Japan, um, are into classical music the way that they are. So like in Japan, they'll have a lot of shows and all that. I'm pretty sure they might in China as well, but like there's a lot of uh, patronages to the arts and there's a lot of craftsmen who are highly revered, directors, filmmakers, and all that stuff. So I don't, maybe you're right. Maybe it's like if you're Vietnamese, you're more like, likely to be pushed to go into the medical field because it's first generation wealth. True. Well, Maybe. speaking on uh, for like China, I feel like the the Mao era too had a lot to do with how I think the current Chinese population views I think uh, you know, wealth and and, and jobs and job security, right? Cuz like I I feel like the Mao era did away with a lot of the arts and did away with a lot of the philosophy and culture. And so I don't know if there is the same esteem. Cause like I look at like Jap Japanese, uh, like like the way they live and the way like they, that there's a lot of respect in the craftsmanship and how they do things, how the restaurants conduct themselves. Whereas China is like almost the exact opposite. So mm -hmm. you're right, there is a difference there. Yeah, like it's not so much money practical driven. There is a soul to things that you take pride in out there. So then that's why I'm like, okay, I, I do hear that they want kids to be a certain thing, but they don't have such limited choices compared to like my Vietnamese friends. My Vietnamese friends, it was always doctor, lawyer, engineer. Whereas like Japanese was like, you better kill it in what you're doing. But if they don't understand like dance, maybe that might not be cool, but they'll understand like, like maybe classical music. And then they'll be like, okay, my son's a great pianist yeah. and you know, he work, he does concerts. But even in that sense, I feel like 
and maybe because I've hyper analyzed this, right? But like when you think of something like uh, being a classical musician, just historically, there's maybe more of a random concept of an understanding that like there's uh, an economic uh, pathway in that yeah. life. It's prestigious yeah, and yeah, yeah. exactly. Whereas yeah. like with something that you maybe don't understand as much, like an industry like dance in America, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's like, how are you gonna make money? Uh, is the superseding thought versus do you love it? Well, yeah. yeah so yeah. that's what I mean by survival, right? Yeah. The 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 goal in these Asian parents, it's always survival. How are you gonna make money? Whereas like, when you're of a privileged group. You don't think how you're gonna make money. For sure. Which I didn't hear that all the time from my Japanese friends and their families and all that stuff too. Whereas like they want the prestige or they want the kids to kill it in something. But it's like, let's say if a kid is like, oh, I'm gonna be a philosopher. He goes, you better go to fucking Harvard then. Or like, you know, you better do it well. So then maybe the, the, the expectation is still there, but then the limited choices are removed. Cause I had a, a friend, she wanted, uh, she's Vietnamese and she wanted to be an oceanographer. And her parents was like, fuck no, why are you gonna do that? She got into a really good school, but she's like, you're gonna be a pharmacist. And I heard that that was a really common thing where if a parent doesn't understand outside of what exists in the medical field, uh, in some Asian groups, it's just the medical field. That's the only thing you're allowed to do. And I'm like, damn, that's crazy. And I guess that's where I came up with the, with the thought of, oh, they're in survival mode. Because they're only thinking about a high paid job because their parents are like, I don't want you to struggle like me. Well, I mean, you grew up completely different, though. Like, yeah, your parents like were really open minded. Yeah, I didn't I didn't have like the hardcore parents where you can't like do anything. You can't explore like they, they want. They put me into art classes. They put me into all sorts of like music classes and sports and stuff like that. And they do you just, still relate to the Asians that have those stories. Uh, like, I mean, me and my parents and aunties are probably way more similar. Do you still relate when you hear that? I relate because I had a friend and who was actually white who had a really strict parent oh. and he was like hardcore like hardcore christian family and was very like kind of old-fashioned in the sense that um there's a really only one way to the top and it's like through honesty honest work and things like that and nothing nothing too frivolous you know like he didn't really have a whole lot of frivolous things in in his like you know view of life did he have to be a doctor too <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I, th I think. Uh, yeah, so something in the medical industry. Yeah, and I think his brother was on his way to going to medical school. Whenever my friend was like, you know what, I can't deal with this pressure because his dad was pretty like. My my dad would always be like, because I I would complain to my dad like my dad like dad you're like you gotta ease up on like. Your, the way you talk to people, it's like you're very off-putting, you're very strong. And he was like, what about, what about Adam's dad? Adam's dad's the, you know, and he's like, and I'm like, oh, fine, I guess you're right. Like, I guess I don't have it that bad. But yeah, like, so I, I learned a lot of that kind of shit from a non-Asian family. But then once I do talk to you guys and I'm like, I can relate because I just, I am aware, you know? But I didn't, I definitely didn't have that. Granted, you know? I, I don't think it's like a lack of understanding, knowledge, or like appreciation for like the arts or culture, but like in survival mode, when you can't afford, you know what I mean, certain things like that, it's like not even a conversation yeah. topic that, like it's a, if I, I remember wanting to do like NJB as a kid at the Boys and Girls Club down the yeah. street. Uh, it was, uh, what does NJB stand for? Something basketball, junior basketball. Mm -hmm. oh, something okay. junior basketball. Anyways, um, and yeah, and I, I just wanted to, Play basketball. You know, you're a kid, and all the, all the boys in your class are a part of the NJB after school program. You know, but it just costs money. It just costs X amount of money, so it was never even allowed. To but you did Taekwondo, right? I did because I wanted to do Kung Fu with my cousin, but Kung Fu cost more. Oh, so really? everything was an economic decision. Down the street was yeah. way cheaper. That makes sense. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, that's why their decisions for you is how you're gonna make money, because. Mm -hmm. They're faced with survival every day. And it makes sense that both your parents are this way because you said they had a hard life at a laundromat and, and your dad fucking swam running away from China and he was in poverty. So it makes sense, right? Yeah. And that's kind of my theory and I think it's, it's pretty right. Because the parents that grew up with privilege and let's say they're middle class, they went to college, like your parents were a little bit more privileged. So they have this freedom to go, yeah, you guys could do whatever you want. Yeah. My, my parents are actually, uh, What's the proper word? Crazy? Um, you can't say this word anymore, but it starts with an R. Because they're actually switched. <laughs> <laughs> that still doesn't do it. They're ridiculous. ridiculous. Oh, they're ridiculous. So, ridiculous. so my parents were switched because- You can't say that word. Ridiculous? Yeah. yeah. Righteous. Oh, okay. 
because my mom is college educated and she comes from uh, my grandpa who is also college educated. So there's like, they're not on survival mode, but she had the survival like whoosh type of mindset that I had to become a doctor. My dad was a refugee who had to eat his own cat, oh. and he didn't even go to his like, own cat. Had to eat his own cat. Oh. They're using cat food, but you said cat. no cat because that's how poor they were. He ate his own cat, oh. and uh, and my yeah, dad was yeah. the one when he was like, I don't care what you do after you go to college, but we're in America, and so I want you to go to an American school, and then the American thing to do is make your own choices after uh, you go to school and pick what you want to do. So it, it was just kind of like, it was it was like switch. Like the main pressure was from my mom to have to become a doctor. My dad did want me to go to graduate school of some sort, cause I think that's what he understood of how you really secure your success. So he didn't care if it was like lawyer or whatever, but that's where he understood. Um, but at least there was more choices from my dad than my mom. You, you, do you think kind of the education bit. system uh, creates a crippling effect in someone's mind where like you're so used to being told what to do from grade to grade to grade, you get to college and there's like so much structure in, uh, built into the education system. Yeah. By the time you get out, you're just looking for that same yeah. structure for something to tell you what to do. Where, what's my schedule like? When yeah. should I go to sleep? What should I eat? What job should I get, right? Whereas like someone that didn't really go follow the education education system and isn't college educated, might be a little more like self-inspired to just kind of like, I make my own rules, you know? And like, yeah, could be. You know? I, think I, I take it back, I don't know about background anymore. I just think one is stubborn and one is more flexible. So it's not Asian thinking, it's just a lot of stubborn fuckers that don't want to be flexible. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>